Thank you so much. Three and a half million year old Lucy shows that hominids walked erect even then. This posture held the key to human development in more ways than one. Lucy's structure and bonobos, Pan Peniscus to use Kenzie's scientific name, have been carefully compared at the University of California. Dr. Adrian Zillman. It's amazing how similar Pan Peniscus is to Lucy, who's one of the early hominids that lived on Africa in Africa about three and a half million years ago. If we look at their skeletons and compare them, they're very similar in brain size. They're very different. They're very similar in stature, uh, the length of the lower limbs, and fairly similar in overall body proportions. Zaire in Central Africa. A Japanese research team has been studying wild bonobos here since the mid-1970s. What bonobos make of humans, we can't say. But humans learned a lot about bonobos. For example, in the wild, they often walk upright. They walk like humans with straight backs and arms swinging at their sides, taking obstacles like logs in stride. Wild bonobos, like the ancient hominid Lucy, can walk upright for long distances, even in rough terrain. A vertical posture leaves hands free to do more important things. Being able to stand upright lets hands carry food, grasp weapons, and hold tools. It also paves the way to the next generation of intelligence, the toolmaker, man. A bonobo walks like this, essentially upright. Chimpanzees bend further forward, making long distance walking difficult. In modern man, the back is perfectly straight. A bonobo leans further forward than the ancient hominid Lucy, but even so, the bonobo resembles the hominid more closely than the chimpanzee does. If we compare their gait, the bonobo is certainly the closest ape to Lucy. Walking upright left apes' hands free to develop new skills. Development didn't stop with hands. An erect posture made room in the throat for larger vocal cords. Tongues became freer to wag. Ah. By contrast, a chimpanzee's tongue has little space to move, preventing it making a range of sounds. With voice came language, with hands came tools, and the dawn of modern man. The place? Guinea, West Africa. Since the mid-70s, researchers have watched chimpanzees using stones to crack nuts. And not just any stone. They select rounded hammer stones, and the anvil often has a depression in the middle, so that smooth nut shells don't roll off the edge and escape the hammer. The scene was played back to Kenzie, so he could watch the chimpanzee's work. Did he relate to the scene? Had he learned from it? Not to be bested by mere chimpanzees, the bonobo took to the woods. 
First, a plentiful supply of hazelnuts. The roar of planes taking off from Atlanta's airport poses the contrast. Above, the latest in human technology. Below, an ape cracking nuts with a rock. For Kanzi, the task is not much of a challenge. No, I want you to slap it open. But surely a quantum leap separates just using a rock and making it into a tool. Like myself, who are Dr. Nicholas Toth, an archaeologist from the University of Indiana, would survive very well in the Stone Age. An accomplished stone tool maker, it was Toth's idea to have Kanzi make a blade. He devised this food store, securely fastened by a rope. Tugging the rope does nothing to release the food. It's not going to come that way. You having trouble with your tool? Dr. Toth showed Kanzi how to take a stone in each hand and strike them together to make a tool. A skilled stone napper can quickly make a sharp flint blade by hand without resorting to force. But Kanzi chose a more energetic method. Whatever works, use it. Kanzi was soon sawing a rope. Perhaps we just witnessed a replay of untold similar moments in our own human prehistory. In a very interesting way, by his own innovation, he learned that by throwing one stone against another, he could easily fracture them and produce sharp edges. This is something we never showed him. He learned on his own. Just uh, a few months after Kanzi started flaking stone, he learned to do this all by himself, by throwing one stone against another. So this may be showing us some glimmerings of the origins of stone technology in human evolution. On one occasion, demands imposed by three months of filming caused human and bonobo tempers to flare. The producers asked Sue to put sentences to Tamuli to see if Kanzi would explain them to her. But Tamuli, who does not understand language, became frustrated. She began kicking Sue. Pound for pound, apes are five times as strong as humans. Even Tamuli is stronger than Sue, let alone Kanzi. With Sue trying to convey that she had misbehaved, Tamuli sought Kanzi's help. To his credit, Kanzi tried to arbitrate, keeping them apart. Tamuli is still unrepentant, and Sue? he stepped between them, mediating with his bow, but the storm was almost spent. Tamuli sat down and offered an apology. Sue, badly bruised, was mollified. Peace was restored. Removed from the compound this time, Sue tried again to involve Tamuli in conversation, and the bonobo's reaction was very different. For one thing, she no longer seemed to feel frustrated and inadequate. For another, her big brother, Kanzi, tried to explain. Tamale, look here. Tamale, could you slap Kanzi? Tamale, you. Slap Kanzi. You slap Kanzi. By example, Kanzi tried to teach Tamale the meaning of the word. Tamale, could you give Kanzi a hug? Kanzi's <laughs> good. Tamale, could you groom Kanzi? He's asking you to groom him. Look, you put your hand up there. Isn't that nice? Go ahead, groom Kanzi. Look, he's showing you. Well, here, you go ahead. You take that one little butt. 
Here, Fonzie. Thank you for showing to Molly. Many people say that only humans teach each other this way, but Kanzi appears to be trying to show his little sister what to do. Dr. Savage Rumbaugh writes of her work. With regard to their social behavior and group structure, bonobos were more like human beings than other living apes. At times, she writes, I seem to be staring into my own distant past and seeing quasi-persons. They were not people, but near people. As I watch bonobos even today, I cannot but sense that I am in the presence of the emergence of the human mind. Kanzi, buried treasure in Swahili. Not a month goes by when